number one for review and to really take off. Now there are happy, uh, we're gonna go into Hebrew. Do you like Hebrew, sister? Sister. You like Hebrew? All right. Now, how can the gold has dim how the pure gold is changed? Now, when you think of gold and you go to heaven, what are you thinking of? The streets. Number two, when you think of gold during this time, what are you thinking of? The chalices. The... Um, what was taken in by Nebuchadnezzar in 586. So what's the gold there? Now, how many want to go to heaven? Three of you. When you go to heaven, you have streets of gold. What was he looking at? Streets of dead bodies. Amen. You get in the picture? So here, gold is under the dust of the falling down of 586 by, what's the king's name? Nebuchadnezzar. So we're going to see a lot of people's from Oz, follow the yellow brick road, how the pure gold is changed the holy stones lie scattered at the head of every street. What were the holy stones, everybody? The temple. the temple. What happened to the temple building? Smashed down. Amen? Do you see this? What's going to happen to some of our churches? Smashed down. Then he says the precious sons of Zion worth their weight in fine gold. Do you see the comparison? We were all to God gold. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 6 and 7, if you were to look there, you have to be like gold. But this is gold that has to go through the what? Fire. What goes through the fire is the city of Jerusalem went through the fire. Do you remember that? Now, both times, 586, 587, and 570, it was destroyed by fire. And so, how they are reckoned as earthen pots. Now, we've been talking a lot about earthen pots. Here's another meaning for earthen pots. An earthen pot here means a low life. When you're an earthen pot, you don't carry much, you can't get a lot in you, and you're only made from the stuff of the earth. So when Jeremiah is walking around the city, he's crying because he's looking at people and they look like they're really empty inside. Did you ever feel like you were empty inside of you? Quite empty. And how they reckon as earthen pots the work of a potter's hand. You can put in there again. Jeremiah 18. Because it's seen God making the, the potters. Making the pots. And when he takes his hands wet with the liquid clay. If it doesn't form right, what do they do? Throw it out. What's happening to people who are not following God? They'll be thrown out. Right. It'll be an emptiness. Verse number three. This is just review. And the jackals give in their breast and, and the suckle their young. But the daughter of my people has become cruel like the ostriches in the wilderness. Now these two animals jackals and ostriches i told you last week they do not take care of their babies very well and what happened to the people of god 
<clears throat> we didn't take care of our own very well. May I say something which can be earth shadowing? Can I tell you why we're having all these problems? Here's a shocking answer. The church has not been the church. When the church really becomes who she's meant to be, it'll be a powerful message to the rest of the world. Right now, we are not very powerful at all. So if you, if you circle the word jackals there and ostriches, do you see that? But the daughter of my people has become cruel. Remember I said that, that the, um, the jackals and the ostriches are cruel to their babies? What have we done to one another? How many of you have ever seen a fellow Catholic attack a fellow Catholic? How many have ever seen one put another one down? Because they're of a different nation or whatever else. How many have ever seen people don't even talk to one another? I get very nervous when people go to communion and don't talk to one another. If you go to communion, do you know what you say? I will talk to everyone. Hmm. I will love everyone. But the daughter of my people have become cruel like the ostriches in the wilderness. The tongue of the infant clings to the roof of the mouth for thirst. Remember we did this last time. There's no food for the babies. The children beg for food, but no one gives it to them. When you really want a lot of, when you want food, what do you do? You get the little kids to get food. When I was walking in Mexico City, I had all the kids come up for food. I told you I took a bunch of them to McDonald's for the caja de feliz. Because they were hungry, I said, I thought, what can I feed you? Let me take you to a steakhouse. They said, we want McDonald's. They're kids, so what else would you want? And papitas and french fries, right? Like you give your wife papitas. Amen. Now, verse five, those who feasted on dainties perish in the streets. Those who are brought up in purple lie in hash heaps. So even here is the rich. Put a little note there by verse five. You won't know the rich from the poor on this day. How many know when we're dead? How many know we all die the same way? Then you go to your judgment day. And you don't know who's rich or poor on that day. There's no distinguishing. So look at verse six. This is just a review. To the chastisement of the daughter of my people has become greater than the punishment of Sodom. I told you to look at Sodom's destruction. Is at the corner of the southwest corner of the sea, the Dead Sea. I asked you to go on YouTube to see pictures of it. Did you see it, Maria? And you know, when I was just looking at that, I was amazed because you can see an outline of the city. Now, here's the difference why Sodom and Gomorrah is less likely for problems than Jerusalem. Because the problem with Jerusalem is what destroyed them beside the outwards attack, there was severe hunger. So that's why the destruction of Jerusalem was worse than Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah was quick and it was over. Fire and brimstone. And brimstone. The destruction of Jerusalem took some time. Through fires and through crying and yelling and screaming. It says to us there, 
The chastisement of the door to my people has become greater than the punishment of Sodom, which is overthrown in a moment to hand being laid on it. So it really, really looked bad. They had their choice. They had their faith. They made wrong choices and they didn't use their faith. Sound familiar? Her princes were purer than snow, whiter than milk. Their bodies were more ruddy than coral. The beauty of their form was like sapphire. They had everything going for them. They didn't have to wait to June 22nd to get their hair cut. They were manicured. They got their nail solo all done. Amen. Now you can see how they were. And you can see now how they are. They're looking like everybody else. Miserable. So we can see, brothers and sisters, there that it was really, really bad news. Do you see that? Then he says to us, this is really getting good stuff. We're going to spend a, a, a good section of time there. Her princes were purer than snow, whiter than milk. Their bodies were more ruddy than coral. Their beauty of their form was like sapphire. But now they had no bodies to show. Verse number eight, their vicious is blacker than soot. They are not recognized in the streets. That means they were really, really covered. Now, if I'm rich, look at verse eight. If I'm rich and I have all this stuff on my head and it's all dirty and everything else, guess what happens? I'm very rich, but guess what happens? I now look like everybody else with the soot, what's the soot from? The fires, the fires of Yerushalayim. In other words, people now could not recognize that I was rich anymore because the fires invaded all of us. With this Corona special, it takes young and old. It doesn't seem to discriminate, does it? So we get all of this upon us. Do I hear amen? So when we're all going through it, we're all cap house. But now if you're in New Jersey, go walk out and have a good time. Amen. Now, what would happen to their skins? Verse 8, their skin has shriveled up like bones and has become as dry as wood. Now underline dry as wood. Remember Jesus warned the woman going to Jerusalem in Luke 23. Because you have missed the hour of your visitation. And they said, you know, pray for us. He said, pray and get your kids in the kingdom of God because things are going to be very dry soon. All your kids in the kingdom? Get them in the kingdom because it'll be very dry as wood. What's dry as wood mean? Throw it into the fire. Now, verse 9, happy were the victims of the sword than the victims of hunger. It's quicker to die than to linger dying, isn't it? And look, look what happened here who pined away stricken by the fruits of the field. Now, what were the fruits of the field? Do you remember the book of Ruth? In the book of Ruth, they have what is called, after they go out to the harvest, they let the poor go out and get it. Amen? So now, the poor are going out, and they wish they were that poor, seeing if they can get something. One day when I was in Florida, I like watermelons, love watermelons. And all of a sudden I'm driving by and all these watermelons are in the field rotting. I'm like, why are they in that field? I'll take them all. Because the poor didn't come to glean them. And so I saw all this fruit gonna be turned rotten in the Florida heat and humidity. And I said, bring it to Vincent's house and we'll all can have a piece. 
Okay, amen. So the fruits of the field. Verse 10. The hands of compassionate women have boiled their own children. Why? Put a little note there. They ate their own children. Now that's bad. Let me tell you something. We are going to get good news. So stay in there. I'm going to give you a lot of good news in a minute. The first time they had no food, so they boiled their kids. The reason why they boiled their kids because they could savor more of the juice. Do you like mashed potatoes or boiled potatoes? Do you like something fried or sauteed? So boiling the potatoes was a despicable way of dying. This is not nice, is it? It's going to get happy, I promise. They pined away stricken. Um, they became their food in the destruction of the daughter of my people. Verse 11, the Lord gave them full vent of his wrath. The full vent of our wrath is when our children have to suffer. And they became their food. Um, he kindled a fire in Zion. What's Zion? Zion is where it's the main mountain in Jerusalem. Blow the trumpet in Zion, Zion, which consumes its foundations. Do you know today there is a difficulty, a big one, trying to find out where the foundation of the first temple was. We don't know exactly. Exactly. That hinges the whole. Thing. Now, here's my guess. When Jesus stood on the temple steps in John 7, if you were to look to the left where Jesus stood, it's called the Mount of Ophel, O-P-H-E-L, to the left. That's where the first temple was. Those are the streets down below that he was walking. And remember, if you, I told you, if you follow that path, down that path will be the pool of Siloam. Remember, Jesus did a miracle there. Amen? Mm -hmm. So now we can see the full wrath of God. If you underline verse 11, the hot anger, the steam coming out, the fire coming in Zion, and it consumed the very foundations. In 1 Corinthians 3.11, St. Paul says, that Jesus Christ is the foundation. So I can know our faith points toward the foundation found in Jesus. Do I hear a resounding amen? Mm -hmm. Now, the kings of the earth did not believe or any of the inhabitants of the world that a foe or enemy could enter the gates of Jerusalem. Now, I love that line. If we have a dynamic faith, no, we are impregnable. If we use our faith, the enemy has to run. What did everybody think about the God of Israel? He has put his name in Jerusalem. And we can't get in. We always thought we had a magnificent church. And we do. And we would always think the enemy can't get in. But the enemy has gotten in big time. Amen? It's, he has ransacked our families and our kids. We don't have even places to tell them for safety. Now the gates of Jerusalem... The gates of Jerusalem were, the gates is where you would meet and get your news of the whole world. So now what was strong behind the gates of Jerusalem? Now, hold, uh, hold your spot there and just think this with me. Jesus said to Peter, the gates of hell will not prevail. Does everybody remember that? Now, the rock where 
Isaac was going to be laid down and killed by his father Abraham. Underneath that rock is called the gates of hell. So when Jesus said to Peter, the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. So on that rock, the sacrifice was going to be offered. The ram was caught in the thicket, Genesis 22. But on that rock, you can say, so did Peter understand what the rock meant in another sense? Yes. So anytime you hear the gates of hell, go to Jerusalem with me in your mind. If you want to know where it was, go online and put in there the gates of hell. And it's right inside the Muslim mosque. I've seen it several times. And I was praying to the Holy Spirit right there. And a Muslim man was screaming at us to get out. Of course, you had to go in barefoot because they don't want any shoes there. So I did pray in there for the power of God to come. Amen. The gates of hell will not prevail. But now it seemed that the gates of hell prevailed. And they came in. So the kings of the earth, verse 12, said, how could this happen? Verse number 13, this was for the sins of the prophets and the iniquities of the priest. Remember, I told you, underline that verse 13. Was it for the people? No. I'm not into a blame game. Who is going to answer to God the most? The priest and the prophets. They better tell you the whole truth. Hosea chapter 2. They better tell you what you need to hear for salvation. I get leery in one thing. I don't want anyone to go to the cooker because I forgot to tell you something. Do I hear amen? I believe you all agree with me. You want to hear the whole, the, the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Today I was reading by Bishop Snyder. He's a great advocate of the truth. He has spoken a million times to Pope Francis. And I love what Pope, uh, what Bishop Snyder has said often. The God of Islam is not the same God of Christianity. Mm -mm. Is not. Now, when you're going to hear your preaching going on, you're going to hear people say, it's the same God. No. Jesus is not Allah. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Do I hear amen? amen. So be careful. It's the new trend today. I guarantee you, you will hear it. Amen. Amen. Go, Bishop Snyder, go. So if you underline verse 13, here's the reason. Prophets and the iniquities, the Avon. Have you ever heard of a woman called Avon? The Avon. The iniquities of her priest. There's an example of an iniquity of the priest in Zephaniah 1 which happened a little before this time. One day he was helping the people of God out down below. But at nighttime, he went up to the mountain to pray to the stars. That is not good. Do I hear amen? Well, now what happened? Look at verse 13. Who shed in the midst of her the blood of the righteous. So you are the holy people of God. What would happen if I lost one of you to a martyr's death? Well, somebody saved me. Somebody saved me. So, brothers and sisters, 
I pray that you have holy priests and nuns with you, holy deacons to lead you to the truth. And ready for this? They know the answers to your questions. Now, they wandered blind, look at verse 14, through the streets, so defiled with the blood. So what would happen if the people of God did not know how to get out of their own dilemmas? That none should touch their garments because they looked like what? Lepers. How many have ever seen a very filthy looking person? And maybe you ran away from him or her and you didn't want to touch the person. Now that's why in verse 15, you have this. You have verse 15. And in verse 15, away unclean, men cried out, away, away, touch not. That's what you sell a leper. Why do we have Jesus' stories about leprosy? In Mark 1, 45, we have stories of leprosy because they represent sin and destruction on your flesh, on your body. So we would say, away, away, get away from me. So they became fugitives and wanderers. What does a leper person do? What does a leper have to do? The leper has to live in a cave away from us. But today is this day of salvation, especially with all these crazy things going on the streets. We have to touch each person's life. Amen. So they became fugitives and wonders and men among the nations. They shall not stay with us any longer. Get rid of them. The Lord has scattered them. Underline verse 16. The Lord scattering them is called the diaspora. How many ever heard of the diaspora? D-I-S-P-O-R-A. The diaspora. Now, when we see all of this destruction everything coming around here comes the hope yes anybody need hope right about now remember you need hope this can get you really really down amen but and so what happens now is we're going to come into we're going to come into some hebrew with you and we're going to to see that he will regard them no more no honor was shown to the priest. No favor to the elders. We need men who will lead us forth. Do I hear amen? Now, we're supposed to have people who could lead us. Let me give you some Hebrew words here, which this section builds up. No honor was shown. Our eyes failed, verse 17 watching vainly for help. In our watching, we watch for a nation that could not be saved. Somebody come and save us. Save us, save us, save us, save us. Now, in Hebrew, when we start, everybody underline verse 17, we start watching. Now, all of us are called watchmen. When you are a watchman, you are giving the power. Does anybody have there in your Bibles the word for Nazir? And Nazarite? Nobody has it there? Okay. What verse? Yeah. It, goes, it goes back to um, the princes were purer than snow, verse 7. Their bodies are red on coral. The hands of the compassionate women have fallen apart. Yeah, her nails. Okay, what verse is that? Seven. All right, look at verse seven. 
Everybody look at verse seven. Let me give you the Hebrew. You have it in your, your, your word there. All right now I'm going to give you a Hebrew that you can't see it in your English except David's good old Bible. So now let me give you a Hebrew lesson, and this is really good. Amen. Are you ready for this? Her princes were purer than snow, whiter than milk. Everybody see that? Now, this is not, I'm going to give you Hebrew. Here's the Hebrew word. Are you ready, sister? Sister, you ready for the Hebrew? Brother, you ready for the Hebrew? The word in Hebrew, see the word says white in verse 7? The word is nazir, N. E, Z, E, R, N, E, Z, E, R. You got that? Now, look at verse 7. This is who we should be. Now, here's good news for you. So, you... Here's what it means in Hebrew. It does not mean the Nazarite vow in Numbers 6. To be pure of milk, whiter than milk. Do you see that? Their bodies were more ruddy than coral. The beauty of their form was like sapphire. You can only get that way if you follow God. So we are all called, now here's good news, to be nazir. Anybody say, everybody say nazir. N E Z E R. Amen. Now, here's what it means. Are you ready? Are you ready to get this challenge on your life? Turn to the person next to you and say, Are you ready for the challenge? To be to be this, it means that you are splendid by God for education and breeding and bringing other people to life. How many would like a Nazer, N-E-Z-E-R, power of the spirit in you? And Jesus said this, that the greatest in the kingdom is what? One who teaches. Hold your spot with me. And we're going to spend a few moments on good news now. Because reading through this, you just want to do one thing. Cry, cry, cry. Amen. But now comes happy, happy, happy. Now, to be a Nazir. And so in David's Bible, it's called a Nazarite. That's not the best word in English. When you go to Numbers 6, they have the Nazarite vow. It does not mean that it means are you ready for this something very powerful for each of us so circle verse seven and say that's the person i want to be now hold your spot with me we'll be back i hope go with me to second samuel second samuel how do you say that in hebrew Nazir, N-E-Z-E-R. We are the people God's going to use to spread the kingdom of God. Do I hear amen? Go to 2 Samuel chapter 1. 2 Samuel chapter 1, verse 10. Here's what it means. To be a man or woman of faith, hope, and compassion. Now look at verse 10. Everybody with me? So I stood beside him and slew him because I was sure that he would not live after he had fallen. I took the crown which was on his head and the armlet which was on his arm, and I brought him here to my Lord. That is the word nazir. A nazir is one who takes and crowns other people. By your lifestyle, you give the crown that what life offers to other people. How many would like to be a Nazir? I believe one of the most important understandings of giving people crowned love. This is called crowned love. 
Now, I know you love everybody. Shake your head, yes. Er. Now, when you love each other, you got to give them crowned love. You got that? That's point number one. Did you all write that down? Crowned love. Now, here is a phenomenal verse. When you have the nasir, when you are all white and pure before the Lord. If you go all the way back with me to Genesis 49, the nasir is used again. Is this good stuff? Now, th this, is, this gets me excited who you are. And knowing you precious saints, I, I would agree, nasir. Okay, everybody go to Genesis 49. Nine, verse 26. We're trying to understand what happens to who the people should have been to what they're seeing. So we have a phenomenal comparison. Amen. So everybody go with me. How many know you're getting good stuff? Do you know you're getting good stuff? Do you see verse 26? The blessings of your father are mighty beyond the blessings of eternal mountains. The boundaries of the, the everlasting hills, may they be on the head of Joseph, on the brow of him who was separate from his brothers. Now box in there, he was separate from his brothers. What's the second sense of being cr crowned or leading the way? When I'm separate from my brothers, it means God has put, bestowed on me such a blessing that I have received it. Now look at verse 26, that these are beyond the blessings of the eternal mountains. Now in Christianity and Judaism, we have Mount Sinai. You know these mountains, Mount Nebo, um, Mount Moriah, the seven hills of Yerushalayim, Mount Calvary, Mount Zion. The second point, number two, when you have Nazir, N-E-Z-E-R, you have and you are white and clean before the Lord, you have the grace of being separate for being used almighty by God, even among your brethren. So when Jeremiah is walking through this terrible thing that happened, he said, these were the people who had all this and they gave it up. Now, does everybody see Nazar? Number two, point number two. Are you paying attention? Point number two, God separates me from my brethren for the purpose of pouring out his grace. God separates me from my brethren for pouring out his grace. Now, all of you are blessed men and women. I love you. Can I give you all an electronic hug? Ready? Here it comes. Hug, 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 hug. Did you get it yet? Hug, 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 hug. Now, it's not because I'm anybody. It's because God made me somebody. And because God makes me somebody, he helps me to understand that which the world doesn't. He leads me into positions where I can be a nazir, N-E-Z-E-R. Amen? Do I hear amen? So his walk around the street becomes very unrecognizable because the people should have been like this. The Catholic Church should be like this. That's why we have a great army called saints. And I'm still clinging to the word of Saint Louis de Montfort, where we say the bonjour. Here's what I'm saying. He's, and I agree with Saint Louis de Montfort. You men and women are so precious, and that God is going to grant you a nazir, so you can teach like never before. You can show and demonstrate in the power of the Spirit. So Joseph was separated from his brethren. Now let's look at the third meaning of Nazir. Is this good stuff? Are you getting good stuff? 
All right, now you better shake your head yes. Okay. Now go on with me to a uh, Deuteronomy 33, 16. Deuteronomy 33, 16. Deuteronomy 33, 16. Deuteronomy 33, 16. I love this definition of Nazir. When you are a believer in Yeshua HaMashiach, that's Jesus the Messiah. In here we find another use of Nazir. With the best gifts of the earth and its fullness and the favor of him that dwelt in the bush, that those come upon the head of Joseph, upon the crown. See the crown? That's the Nazir. See it? Of the head of him that is prince among us. And so what happens then? Number three, when you have Nazir in you, you give out the best gifts on earth and people understand their fullness. I want to share something with you I found today in the Bible. Now, I read this book, this precious book, 39 times. And I keep discovering things. Amen? Are you ready for this? How many want to see Jesus as an Azir to you? Now, does everybody understand those three points of Nazir? I, I, I better give you the uh, fourth. Well, let me show you Jesus, and I'll give you the fourth point of Nazir. Amen? Are you getting good stuff? See, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get very happy now. Amen? How, how many know you're hearing stuff you've never heard before? Not at all. Amen? Now watch this, watch this. The Holy Spirit gives you gifts, yes or no? How many know Jesus gives you gifts too? Now, Vincent, I hope you're paying attention because your group still doesn't know this. Now, if you hold your spot, we're, we're going to be back to be back, okay? because I want to give you point number four on Nazir. N-E-Z-E-R. If one person asks me how to spell it afterwards. Amen. Now, go with me to Ephesians 4. This is, sister, this will blow your mind, sister, beyond belief. Are you crying yet? Now, go to Ephesians 4. Now, we're going to look at what Jesus gives you. Did you find it in Ephesians 4? No. Who wrote Ephesians? Who wrote Ephesians? Very good, brother. Now, Ephesians 4. If you go to verse number nine i read i read the words i preached on this about a million times but how many know you don't see things until you finally see them see verse nine it says in verse nine therefore it is said uh, uh look at verse seven but grace was given to each of us according to the measure of christ's gift so number one you get jesus is in that seer to you is Grace. The Holy Spirit gives, but Jesus gives you grace. Now watch this. That's A. How many, how many need grace? Everybody shake your head yes. We should do a whole Bible study on the grace of God. So this is Nazir. Amen. 
Now, each of us, according to the measure of Christ's gift, therefore it said when he ascended to high, he led a host of captives. Underline there verse eight. He gave Jesus gifts to men. Now, Vincent, you would always think it's the Holy Spirit, of course. But here's what I've never heard preached ever. And here are the gifts that Jesus gives you. The nazir. So number four, you could put in there, the gifts of Jesus are to equip people to live. Look at verse 12. See the word to equip the saints? All right, now what are these gifts in verse 11? Are you with me, saints? Say amen. And his gifts were that some should be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry. Who gave you equipping power with his gifts, with his nazir? Jesus. Give him a praise offering. Praise God. Now, here's what I'm saying. When you get Jesus' gifts, you know. Ready for this? Hold your heart. Are you holding your heart? When you receive Jesus' nazir, you will receive what your assignment should be in life. It's not to move to Basking Ridge. You will receive your assignment. You will know what you're going to do. You will be equipped. When I, what really, I preached on this a million times, but what really startled me it was given by Jesus. Are you getting this, Vincent? Now, are you ready for, what are we up to five now? The fifth, the fifth meaning of nazir. I got to go slow so you can get it. Slow. My friend down there will say, slow. Slow. Amen. Are you ready for your nazering? Is this good stuff? Massachusetts is a good stuff. Amen. Now, go with me to number five. The fifth thing about being nazir. I love four. I love Jesus. I think one of the best. I like Joseph being separated from the brethren too. That's powerful. That's very, very powerful thought. And what God allowed him to go through to be separated from the brethren. How do you say separated from the brethren, by the way? Holy. I know I want us to turn. This is really good stuff. Amen. I love to give you fresh manna, sister. I mean, some, one time they say I don't give you fresh stuff. I give you fresh stuff all the time. Amen. Now find, find in your Bible, Nahum. Chapter 3. Someone took Nahum out of my Bible. Would you put it back, please? Nahum. Oh, oh good, you got it. Go to chapter 3. Go down to verse... What is it? Uh, I can't read my own writing. 17, is it? 
Okay, that's it. Your princes are like grasshopper, your scribes like clouds of locusts, settling on the fences in a day of cold. When the sun rises, they fly one. No one knows uh, where they are. Um, so what happens, your, your, your shepherds are asleep, O king of Assyria, your nobles slumber, your people are scared on the mountain for no one to gather them. There is no assouging your hurt, your wound is grievous. All who hear the news of you clap their hands over you, for upon them should not come evil, your increase, um, your unceasing evil. Okay, now, what happens is, when you have the word Nazir is in verse 17, your princes are like grass, your scribes like the cloud of locusts. Aren't we seeing a big attack right now? So now notice that we will be kept away. See, we're settling on your fences there. We will be kept away from harm. When we have the Nazir of God, we are kept away from all of that. And look again, it says verse 18, your shepherds are asleep. Hello? Where are our shepherds? Amen? So, point number five, when you have Nazir, you are saved from the inevitable. That's coming. My brother was worried about this corona. I kept saying to him, just put the blood of the lamb on you. Notice that Nahum in verse one says, woe to you bloody city. Who's he talking to? Jerusalem. When did Nahum preach? By the way, Nahum is almost never mentioned. And so what are we going to be protected from? It goes hand in hand with the book of Lamentations. So did everybody get all five down now? Did you get them down, Brother Newton? Okay, so we're protected from the enemy coming into our own area. Okay, when you when you read Nahum 3. Now, this is good stuff. Do I hear amen? Maria, did you follow the Nazir? Now, did everybody follow the Nazir? So, for instance, what I'm saying to you is there should be a teaching on the fivefold ministry. When we're talking to Jesse in Florida, he said to me, Father Bill, I have never heard anybody preach on the fivefold ministry. In the five what? Fivefold ministry that Jesus gifts us to equip us to find out what your assignment is. And it's not to go and get French fries for your wife. It's a little more than that. Do I hear amen? amen. Oh. Now, uh, you got good stuff. Now back with me to our time is really ticking out here. Now let's go on to um, verse 17 now. Lamentations 4, verse 17. Our eyes fail watching vainly for help. Now everybody put in there the word Egypt. The Bible says once God conquers an area in our lives, don't go back. Deuteronomy 17. Once you've been saved from an area, don't go back to it. Did they listen? No. So when you look at verse 17, Lamentations 4, 17, they were hoping Egypt would come running through. In the book of Daniel chapter 8. And by the way, here's an interesting shock for you. Cleopatra is mentioned in the Bible. 
not by that name. And what Israel did is she became a shell of being passive and let the enemies run up and down Israel. Right now in 1948, Israel will never do that again till the second coming of the Lord. Never let, the, even though she's surrounded by 175 million enemies, Israel have left her passivity forever. I'm going to tell you in our series on depression. The way to overcome it and to get new thinking is to start to go on the offense. Israel is now on the offense. Amen. So the reason why he says there, so if you look at verse 17 and you put in there and are watching, we watch for a nation that which could not save us. Everybody put it, put it in there, Egypt. Where did they come from? Egypt. What were they saved from? Egypt. Somebody say, this doesn't look good, amen? So verse 18, as we begin to wrap up here. Men dogged our steps so that we could not walk in our streets. That means death seemed to be around. Our end drew near. Our days were numbered. Everybody underline that our days are numbered. Where did we hear that before? Daniel 5. The handwriting on the wall. Remember, many, many tekel farsen. Do you remember that, Bob Balthazar? We could not go on. Then he says, our end drew near. Who mentions our end drew near? First Peter 4, verse 7. St. Peter said, we are getting ready for our exodus. Our days are number, our end has come. Our pursuers, verse 18, 19, were swifter than the vultures in the heavens. They chased us upon the mountains. Now watch this. Here's what verse 19 means. It was so bad. We tried to get out of Jerusalem. I hear one Luna Dune. She says, if Trump wins again in um, November, she said, I'm moving to Ireland. I said, don't wait, go now. So what happens is it was so bad. that they tried to escape Jerusalem. See where it says the pursuers were swifter? Who are the pursuers? Nebuchadnezzar's army. So what happens as you try to escape? You were caught. So nobody could do what? Escape. They chased us on the mountains. They were really chased. In my prayer time, again, I'm reading Joshua, saving Rahab. Yeah. And she was telling them, go run. They just left. And they were looking for them for three days. But meanwhile, they were hiding with her. It takes a woman, huh? They chased us on the mountains, verse 19. They lay and wait for us in the wilderness. So every place we went, the enemy came, came, and came against us. Now, 
the breath of our nostrils, the Lord's anointed was taken into their pits. Everybody circle the word, the Lord's anointed. His name was Zedekiah. The Hebrew word Mashiach. What did they do when Zedekiah tried to escape? He didn't believe in the word of God. He, you know why people don't want you to hear the word of God? It's too negative. But when you hear the truth, it will bring a conviction upon you. So who is the Lord's anointed here? Zedekiah. He's the last king of Israel. He's the last king. And when Nebuchadnezzar caught him, they burned out his eyeballs. And the last thing he saw with his eyes seeing this was his sons put to death before him. So that will be the last thing he ever saw. Of he of whom we said, verse 20, under his shadow we shall live among the nations. There's some people to say they could protect you. But don't go under anybody's wing, Malachi 3, unless it's the Lord's ray of mercy. Let the Lord protect you. Do I hear amen? The Lord is my light and my salvation. Do I hear amen? Malachi 3. So now he comes and now he says, Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom. How many remember Edom? Verse 21. How many remember Edom? Remember Esau and Jacob. Jacob, Esau went to a place called Edom. It's to the right of Jerusalem, east. When he went there, they, it was the, they dwelled in the land called Uz. U-Z. Put in there Job 1. Did you ever hear Job? You're thinking of Oz. I know you are. It's not Dorothy and Toto 2. This is Uz, not Uz. So that's where we get Job chapter 1, the land of Uz. So Job was in the land. By the way, Job goes back to the book of Genesis. Amen. Be rejoiced and be glad, O daughter Edom, the dweller in the land of Uz, but to you also the cup shall pass. Now, everything we're going through shall pass. Personally, this is only a personal opinion. I do not believe Corona is coming back. I believe it's gone. But you and I got to learn the lessons and be prepared. Amen. Maria will never be caught up in her house again. We'll be back to church tomorrow, today. And then a small time, we'll take off those ridiculous masks. Hi, I want to sell you a mask. Hey, give me your credit card number and I'll ship all these masks to your face. Save us, Lord. Save us, save us, save us. Amen. So everybody circle where is. But to you, shall the cup shall pass. So how many know what's the cup to suffering? This is all going to pass away. Now, what did they un what did they do? the Edomites, you shall become drunk and strip yourself bare. What did they do? The punishment of your iniquity, Avon. What did they do, the Edomites? They helped the Babylonians come in to destroy Jerusalem. Nice people, huh? And we can see now what's going to happen. Why did God let our enemies rise up? 
right? There's your answer. The punishment of your iniquity, O daughter, is accomplished. How do you say it is accomplished? It is finished. Do you remember that expression? He will keep you in exile no longer. It's going to be over. It's over. How many feel a little sense of relief? It's over. But your iniquity, O daughter, eat him for what you did. He will punish. He will uncover your sins. In biblical days, to have your sins exposed means to be uncovered. Amen. Do I hear amen? So that's chapter four. That's chapter four. Now, next week, we kind of start to wrap up chapter five. Then I'll take you on a very short explanation of dealing with our depressions. Amen. When we feel down, blue, green, whatever color. Because Kermit said, it's not easy being green. <laughs> so we're going to work through um, uh, some absolutely phenomenal scripture to aid us in our depressing moments okay just a little commercial are you, are you getting good stuff now tomorrow night we'll start the novena to the um sacred heart okay amen are you tomorrow getting this? Night, okay heavenly father we ask your blessing upon us we ask your mighty that we may be men and women of Nazir, and that we will be the ones who will stay stable, and no matter what goes on, we will walk in purity and life in the spirit. In Jesus' precious name, and may all be blessed, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Over 100 people joined us tonight. Praise the Lord. Jesus Christ. Amen. Jean, it's about time you showed up. It's about time because your report is revoked right now. And Lee, you're finally in the right seat. And Gerda, you are such a Gerda. Father, what time tomorrow? Whose dog is barking? Not mine. Throw that thing out. No, they're sleeping. What time tomorrow, Father, is the novena? What time? I, I think, what, around 7? Oh, okay. We have the men's group tomorrow night, right? Oh, then oh, around that... 8. Yeah, around 8. 8 o'clock. Eight, what did you learn tonight? 8. <clears throat> Thank you, Father. Bless you. What I was trying to look through is it seems as if, Father Bill, every time they spoke of either punishment or chastisement, they spoke of them as daughter of Zion or daughter of my people. But yet, when they spoke about the actual iniquity itself, they said the daughter of Edom. So that kind of goes all the way back to the beginning then, right, about the original iniquity. Yes. They're get, you know, so the punishment and the chastisement, they're talking about the people of Israel as if it's, you know, the, the close relationship seeing daughter of Zion, daughter of my people, but yet the actual iniquity itself, he's calling the daughter of Edom. So bringing that all the way back to, to the, the very beginning, basically, right, with the, with the, with the sin that happened with Esau and, and with yeah. Isaac, right? Esau and Jacob. You got it. That was Sister Marie. Brother Peter. How about me? Brother David. Okay. Um, verse 20. Could you look at verse 20 where you mentioned Zedekiah? Yeah. Look what mine says. This is very interesting. What does it say? Mine says, the breath of our mouth, Christ the Lord is in our sins. And we said, under thy shadow, we shall live in the Gentiles. Isn't that interesting? It does, it does mean the word Christ, yeah. Yeah. No, but I'm saying, if you think about it, 
the Jews, the Gentiles, Christ, our sins. See how it all. Who's dog? Throw that prophetic. thing out. Zedekiah, mm -hmm. but see how it's prophetic as well. Yes. Christ, yes, sins, it is prophetic. Gentiles, because the Jews rejected. Amen. So Cheryl, what would you get tonight? And that's my. I wanted to ask about the assignments. So. Is this a, like a lifetime assignment? Is this something? Yes, that... it's what you so, should, should be doing. How many of you had me before? You Many of you would not have married the person you're married to. Oh. <laughs> it's too late now, right? Um, so it is a lifetime assignment. It's not yes. like an end time yes. assignment. Yes. Okay. Uh, yes. Suck. What else do you want? Sister Marie, what's your, what's your thought? You know, my, my thoughts is how difficult it has been for Israel, you know, yes. because of how they just, uh, you know, didn't stay faithful to God. Amen. And how they fall into sin, out of sin, in sin, and yes. they're looking for the wrong people but to now, help. But now there's such a change up. Remember, to really work in the power of the Holy Spirit, you right. must be on offense. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yes. We're going to we're going to we're going to tackle that in about 2 or 3 weeks. Yes. I want to give you phenomenal teaching on getting out of your depression. I'd love that. That'd be great. Amen. Father Bill, is there a connection between the nazir and our role as a prophet in the assignment that we get? Yes. yes. Absolutely. Yes, we sh we I hate to say it, so it's, you know, all of us want the grace of humility, and right. we want to stand out. We're not here to stand out. By living your faith, you automatically do. Right. Because you're powered by God, by Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm. and you've got the Father's hand upon you. Did you like Nazir? Oh, that was powerful. Wonderful. Yeah, very powerful. Basically, Excellent. Nazir is crowning people around you. Right. Wow. And you able to do that. Wow. So you take my Larry. Here he is. Say to my Larry, Larry, I want to crown you. <laughs> <laughs> With jewels, Larry said, with jewels. <laughs> no, with the bijou. <laughs> with the bijou. That's me. Oh, <laughs> he that's me know, thank you. Malachi 3. <laughs> uh, on his, uh, Malachi 3 is the uh, the healing on his raise, the raise and healing. Patty and Lee, you're sitting in the right position now. Thank you. Malachi 3. Anybody else? <sighs> Father Bill. Praise the living God. Thank you so much. I, this teaching on this year and it, it's been so powerful. And yes. just today I've been um, moved to, not even today, I've just been, li you know, listening and learning and I just have this urge and, 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 zeal to study the scripture go, Gina, and then go, go honey go go honey and then and then today i get this like urge that to teach the scripture and i'm like what no not god <laughs> oh my god no going? but then when i hear this i i feel like this yes. is a confirmation going. Yes. to did you go get excited forward. about it I have been excited. You are, I call you Father Prof. You are my, been my professor for years. You, if I show you my face, you'll know who I'm remember, no. <laughs> from St. Antoninus. No, when I had this conversation before. Yes, we have. And so now it's like hearing this is, I, I had to just... put your kids in an orphanage. You know, <laughs> you know, I have four of them. You know, I, do, I have four yes. of them, and I, I hide in the bathroom to listen. <laughs> oh boy! Uh, four little ones, and it, give you know, them poo poo and put them to bed. And exactly. Get into I just gave them a big bowl of fufu, and I'm throwing them in bed so I can catch up on my YouTube. 
<laughs> for you. <laughs> Oh, what I'd miss with them, but uh, God bless well, you. I, thank I, you all. You know, thank you so much for joining us. You're a blessing. Amen. Oh, no, I, I, I've been here. I've just been quiet and, you know, I have to mute these little um, blessings from God. <laughs> but I've been here as best as I can. So God I'll bless you, you Father. Right now. Oh, give me a hug. Right, we love comes, you. My husband, my, you know oh, what my oh, husband oh. does? He says, like, you know, if, if Father Bill said it, then it is. Like, there's nothing else, no one else in this world. That I even got to tell some people to stop your Jeeps. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah. Once you say it, then I'm, like, confirmed with him. Uh, anyone else, he's like, whatever. But once I say That's Father good. Bill, then <laughs> So, you know, no, thank you for what this What a great family you have, too. Future. And more babies. More babies. No, what? Father, are you going to come and babysit? Yes. <laughs> I love your kids. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Gina. Thanks so much. Thank you. God bless you. No, thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Marie, anything else? No, I'm, I'm all just five points. I, yes, I do have all five points, but I really want to go through them and type them up, you know? Eileen, do you have all five points? And memorize them. Sorry, how can you memorize all of this? I don't know. Well, that was, you think uh, my Larry has all five points? That's him to answer. Larry. He went downstairs. <laughs> He, he, at least he got back in. I wasn't, I could hear you, but it said, I couldn't get in. So Brother said, Peter, the, the what are you tonight? Father Bill, the, um, when you were saying about uh, the rock, the dome of the rock, basically, where uh, <clears throat> Isaac was going to be slaughtered by, sacrificed by Abraham, right. wasn't the gates of Haiti, wasn't up in Philippi at the rock there? Because Je no. that's where Jesus said to, uh, no. It was Jerusalem. Because there was also a hole in the rock in Philippi, which they thought yes, went to, but, to Hades. No, no, the, 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 the pagans no, worshipped there. No, the orth yes, but the Orthodox Jewish belief is Jerusalem. That the gates of hell is right underneath that rock. Uh, it's a legend. Uh, but when Jesus said it, yeah. you have more of a powerful punch. Wow. I just thought he said, I, I knew about the Jerusalem, but well, I just thought he said that to Peter because that was where he, he said, said it to Peter, Peter yes. Upon, yeah, but that's Philippi because Matthew he said, 16. upon my rock, I built no. a church. That was no. at Philippi. He, he used Philippi because of the rock formations. Right, right. But the gates of hell is Jerusalem. Father. Whose dog? Father. Is that yours, Eileen? Throw it out. Hey, Father. <laughs> was that... Um... Was the, the reference to the gates of hell in, in Jerusalem, was that referring to one of the gates of uh, Jerusalem? No, it's where it's the Muslims now took over what is called the Dome of the Rock. Because the rock is where Abraham was going to kill Isaac. So inside there, and I'm sorry that the last two times we were there in Israel, they would, the Muslims do not want us inside. Right. So that's why we could not show you the inside. Yeah. Now, I've been in there inside twice. Yeah. And underneath that rock is a legend, the gates of hell. Oh, wow. It's, under, it's underneath there. Wow. I wouldn't want to go so there. the next time you, you want to read that in Matthew 16, Brother Peter, you paying attention? So that's where, that's where I want you to think about it. Hmm. What was 1 Peter 4, 7, Father Bill? 1 Peter 4, 7 says the end is near. Oh, okay. Oh, so that's actually... Hosea 2, Father, what was that reference? Hosea 2 is to the prophets and the priests failing at their task. Oh, there it is, verse 7, yeah. First Peter 4, 7, the end of things is all hand, and therefore keep sane and sober for your prayers. And Father Bill, Jesus' gifts, that's God's perfect, God's perfect purpose for Christian followers. Yes. Okay. It's to help you get your assignment. 
That's a good one because how do I know what's my assignment? It's not to go to Basking Ridge. <laughs> oh. You're going to give a couple of assignments? Is that it, Father? Brother Peter, did you get all this? Yeah, but Father, Father, I mean, looking at at, uh, at in, in chapter sixteen, it's in verse thirteen. They came to Caesarea Philippi, and that's where he asked the disciples who he was. And then that's where Jesus said, "You are Peter. On this rock I build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against." against it so he was at philippi and i thought i remember one of our guides saying that he was actually yes, Peter, talking I agree about with that. you i agree with the guide so from the, the new, rock formation so actually catholic, from a new, new testament part catholic interpretation says yeah. peter the person was the rock right but jesus said so it to when peter they, at when that they spot. heard that reference the gates of hell right that's jerusalem well, that's what the Orthodox, that's the, that's yes. what the Jews believe. Yes. So if you're with me in Jerusalem on the Temple Mount, you were right by the gates right. of hell. Yeah. And I look at on YouTube, I'm sure I'm going to do that. Okay, now I got to speak. Okay, Father, um, I like the part where you have uh, that you have to listen to the holy deacons, priests, uh, and whoever else is in charge, like bishops, cardinals, pope, or whatever, um, because they are the people that um, would lead you in the right direction. Amen. Yeah. And also, um, because the lay people have taken over in the United States so much mm -hmm. and are educated um, or were I should say, educated. Um, I have always felt uh, that I've been very responsible for my job, just as much as um, the people that have had vows because of um, the responsibility um, and that the sisters abandoned their jobs. And then um, as a lay minister, in the church, it's just as responsible. Mm -hmm. So this really talks to lay people who um, are doing, you know, this kind of work. Amen. Thank you. Yeah. Eileen, what are you studying? Father, uh, so actually verse 7 of Lamentations, really that's the overview summary of the Nazir. So that's once we are purer than snow or we attempt to be with the holiness. So, so we following God in our holiness, we are able to do the, have these net Nazir separate five steps basically that that will, will bring us on, but that's the summary of it. So basically we have to follow God. If we follow God, we're separated from him. We're living a holy life. And then the rest of the five pieces, parts will come into play then. Yes. Oh, I love that method. That you like that, Nazir? Senora Casmalina está con nosotros. If you are a person of faith, hope, and charity, then you have the Nazir. Yes. I got it now. I got it. Brother Peter, wake up. Brother Peter's looking to God right now. I got two computers here, so. Well, I tell you, right behind you. I should be teaching that class on, on, on what is the depression. I, mean, I don't know what that means. What did you say about watching? You're called watchmen giving what? What, what were you trying to say about that? Watchmen. The watchmen usually went along the walls, seeing if the enemy was coming. But now the enemy is already inside, destroying. So they were looking, they ran up to the walls, thinking that Egypt will come and help them out. Uh, okay, thank you. Father, the Deuteronomy 33, 16, right? Yes. It's, it's talking about Joseph who was given into Egypt, right? Yes. Right. 
and how he saved this eventually, right? Yes, he was very Nazir. Right. Nazir. But the last, the, the, the last part of that was, and upon the crown of the head of him that is a Nazir. That's Nazir. The crown. That's Nazir. That's Nazir. Okay. In Hebrew, it's Nazir. So, so that's Joseph. Yes. Yeah. With that's also. even even you could say Saint Joseph is Nazir. And Saint Joseph, you know, I was thinking about that too because he was there. He did the same thing as well. You know, he knew yes. Jesus and Mary taking care of them. You know, had visions. Did you have a good session, yeah. sister? Awesome. It was beautiful. Brother Peter, what the hell are you doing? Multitasking, Father. <laughs> <laughs> so, Father, if we're all priest, prophet, and king, we receive a little bit of that nazir at our baptism. Sister, you have it right now. But the thing is, you didn't know you had it, and you don't use it. If you want to use your nazir now, the, the passage I gave you in Ephesians, use it. And help people like Peter find his assignment. So the stories of leprosy represent sin, destruction, sin. and weakness. Yes. Mm -hmm. Did you see the leprosy in there? Keep away, away from us. Father Bill, number four is the grace given to us by Jesus, right? Right. And the gifts. Jesus and the gifts. gifts. Right. Right. I never read and it quite like that before. Father, we were in the Bible is that Nebuchadnezzar when he comes and boiled the last king of uh, Israel's. Uh, That's in the five. book of Kings. Okay, first Kings. Okay. Second Four, Kings. Seven, 24. Okay. Thank you. Because that's a good one to read. Bye, Christina. Father Bill. Yes, Raquel Garcia. I have a question. What do you think of uh, Vigano's letter to President Trump? Praise God. Very good. I agree. Very good. Powerful. Very good. Well, we have a couple of churches inside the churches, and we know who's following. Amen. <laughs> Sister Marie, did you get all this down? This was wonderful. Little Marie, did you get all this down, Miss Eileen? I love this, sir. Number four, you know, I love this thing, you know, uh, Ephesians 4, 7 through 12, I think it goes. I think it's perfect. Thank you, Father. Good night. Good night. Good night. Please give me a hug there, Pat. Good until we all attain the unity of faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to mature man. There it is, Sister Marie, on your screen. Sister Marie, it's on your screen there. Let's see, 12. The measure of Christ's gifts. Wow. But what dawned on me. Christ gave us those gifts. Right. To equip when we all have what is called the gifts of the Holy I Spirit. Love this. And the gifts should come to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, to equip the saints, work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ. I just think that was really very, very powerful. To understand it from the perspective of Nazir, which is the grace given to us through the Holy Spirit and through Jesus. Wow. Mm -hmm. Thank you, New. Eileen, did you get new stuff? Yeah. Uh, Father Bill, one quick question. So do we know our gifts based on what we're good at? Absolutely. Yeah. I got to take you through a five minute session. I'll tell you. Sorry this. for my stupid questions. <laughs> I got to take you through a five minute drill and you'll have all your gifts. And those 25 people living with you will know their gifts too. <laughs> okay. And more babies, Gina. 
<laughs> I just told Nandi he I he almost he he gave me a look and walked away. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All right. I definitely need that drill, Father. I'll give you a five-minute uh, drill. Okay. And okay. you'll get all the lessons. Okay. What you have. Miss Eileen. Good night. No, Blessings. Good night. <laughs> Brother Newton. Um, well, blessings to everyone. See you soon. Good night, Father. Thank you. Good night, Father. Thank you. Good night. Thank you, Father. Take care, brother.